Hello, and welcome to Battle Report number 19. So, this one's going to be a little bit more unusual, uh, because this isn't round two of the Scottish Championships, and it's not a game that I played ages ago either. Uh, this is one that I played as I'm recording this afternoon, and by the time you see it, hopefully this will be the release day for the Hobgoblin supplement. So, I thought it would be entertaining, uh, as I had early access by a few days, uh, I had a little bit of early access to the Hobgoblins book. I thought I'd get hold of someone um, within the team and have a game against them and try them out, make sure that I've got a battle report out on release day for you guys to have a look at and see, see how they perform, um, and also partly for me to, you know, have a good look at them because they look pretty cool. Uh, and I actually got to play against the team lead for um, the Hobgob Hobgoblins book. And he goes by Tyranno, uh, Tyranno, on the forums. Um, so, uh, without any further waffle, let's take a look at the lists. Uh, so I've taken Kingdom of Equitaine. Uh, it was nice and easy just to pull out a list that I used in a tournament uh, quite recently. Uh, it just meant that I didn't need to think about it too much. And uh, I'd, it meant that I wasn't subconsciously tailoring my list at all for... Um, specifically playing against hobgoblins as well. So for my general, I've got a Duke on Barded Warhorse. He's got a shield, a uh, Questing Oath and Bastard Sword. The Bastard Sword is uh, enchanted with the Kingslayer. He's got Crusader's Salvation for a 1-up re-rollable save, Obsidian Rock, and the Virtue of Valor, which is the dueling one. So he has to issue a duel, and then he gets re-rolls in the duels as well. Uh, next up, I've got my Might Duke. He's got a Grail Oath. He's on a Barded Warhorse, and then he's got the standard Shield with the Fortress of Faith to reroll ones. The Lance with Supernatural Dexterity, which makes him Agility and Offensive 9 total, or 8 and 9, I think, respectively. Uh, Basalt's Infusion for a 1-up save, and then the Virtue of Might, obviously. Um, next, I've got my Wizard Master of Druidism. Uh, she is on a Equitan Unicorn to give the unit that she's with Magical Attacks and... MR2, I like my magic resistance. Uh, and then I've got my BSB, he's on a Barded Warhorse with a shield, uh, he's got two Aether Icons, he's got a Lance, a uh, Grail Oath so he can go with the Grail Knights, and he's got Crown of the Wizard King. Uh, in core, I've got a unit of 11 Knights of the Realm with full command and Banner of the Last Charge, and then two small scoring darts of uh, Knights of the Realm with full command. Uh, a unit of 8 Knights of the Grail with full command and Stalker standard, a unit of 10 Knights of the Quest with full command and Stalker standard, and two lots of chaff. Uh, so two lots of five Yeoman Outriders with bows, light armor, and shield. Uh, but this isn't the list that you're here look to look for, presumably. Uh, you're here to look at the Hobgoblins list, so let's take a look at that. Um, so when this goes up, you should have access to the army book. Uh, so if you've got it there, you can hopefully follow through. Uh, or I might have done a review, or there might be somebody else who's done a review. So if, if you've not gone and had a look yet, just yet, go and have a look at the book, and then come back and watch the rest of the battle report. I shouldn't be covering it in too much detail, otherwise we'd be here for a very, very long time. Um, suffice to say, though, if you're familiar with the vassals in the Infernal Dwarves book, you should be relatively familiar with the Hobgoblins. Uh, they work very similarly, obviously, to the other supplement books. Uh, they take an aspect of the legendary army book and then expand upon it to add uh, a little bit more depth to the lore. Uh, so, we've got a Shah, uh, which is uh, the equivalent of a Goblin King, almost. Uh, he's got slightly better stats. Uh, it, crucially, he's got Discipline 9, which is nice. And he's a little bit faster, a little bit better in combat, I think. Uh, he's the General. He's uh, riding a Bear Dog, uh, which is... Excellent name. Makes me think of um, Naga. I think it's Naga? Uh, from The Legend of Korra, if you've seen that. Uh, so they get a pair of two strength four AP1 attacks, and they come with stomp attacks uh, as well uh, to represent um, basically slow impact hits. Um, so without just giving the unit impact hits that hits everything, this is specifically for, for running down infantry, essentially. Uh, he's got a shield, a lance, enchanted with a shield breaker. Uh, he's got a bow. Uh, he's wearing elemental plate, which gives him a 4 plus Aegis against close combat attacks. Uh, but this Aegis can only be used against melee caused wounds that have been inflicted with a weapon other than a hand weapon. 
So if you do it with a hand weapon, then he doesn't get the Aegis save. If you do it with something else, so a bastard sword, a spear, paired weapons, anything like that, then he does get the Aegis save against it. Uh, additionally, he's also got a 4 plus Aegis against flaming attacks. Uh, he's got Breath of the Brass Ball, which you'll be familiar with from the ID book. It's plus one hit point and toxic attacks, and the Potion of Swiftness. Uh, next up is a Hobgoblin Conjurer, which I think I shares uh, essentially the same stat line as a you know a human wizard or a Vassal Conjurer from the ID book. Uh, he's a Wizard Master of Witchcraft with the Talisman of the Void and a Binding Scroll. Uh, and then next up, a Hobgoblin Chief, um, which actually might be slightly more representative of a a goblin King. Uh, res 4, four atta uh, 3 attacks, strength 4, discipline 8, uh, offensive 6 and defensive 5. Uh, he's riding a Plains Tusker, so if you're familiar with the Ogre's book, that's what that is. Uh, ridden by a mini howder of uh, other hobgob hobgoblins. Uh, he's the BSB, of, as I've said, he's got uh, an Aether Icon, a Talisman of Shielding, an Obsidian Rock, and he's got one of the two compulsory choices for the Hobgoblin Chief, Cavalry Commander, which gives the unit that he's with, if they're cavalry, uh, plus, one uh, plus one advance on the charge, which is pretty cool. Uh, in core, he's got two lots of 40 Hob Levies, which are, again, share stat lines with Vassal Infantry. One unit has Spears and Shields with Full Command and Legion Standard, and the other unit has Shields, Halberds, and Heavy Armor with Full Command and the Rending Banner. Uh, next up, he's got a little unit of Hob Levies. Uh, these are acting as the bunker for the Conjurer. They've got Shields, Bows, Standard Bearer, and a Musician. Uh, and then two lots of Hob Slingers. Um, so Hobgoblins, Skirmisher, and they've got Slings, and they can af inflict... Um, the rule is uh, boiling oil, and it basically gives easier access to uh, one of the army's uh, army-wide special rules, uh, iron rain. So, if you're making a shooting attack with a unit with iron rain into against a target that you are looking at its flank or rear, you get plus one to hit and plus one AP. And if you hit that unit with hobslingers, then you can give them a boiling oil token. And then you always count as being in that target's flank or rear, so you always get the plus one uh, to hit and plus one AP. Uh, and then that lasts either until the end of the phase or you do a wound, um, I believe, whichever comes first. Uh, next up is a big unit of Tuskers, uh, Tusker Mahouts, uh, with full command and predators pendant. So that's the um, Sylvan Elves item, the uh, distracting on the charge. Uh, and again, Tusker Mahouts are very similar to uh, Ogre Tuskers. Um, then 14 Cataphracts. So these are bear dogs ridden by hobgoblins with lances, paired weapons, weapon master, and bows. And they come with infernal armor. No, they don't. Uh, heavy armor, plus two from the bear dog, and plus one for the shields that they're carrying. Uh, so that's a big block of... Um, heavy infantry, uh, heavy cavalry even, essentially, uh, with the Banner of the Green Tide, so they've got fighting extra rank. Uh, next up is one of the books unique, uh, an another of the books unique entries, uh, a Drum Gogyag. Uh, Gogyag being a name for any creature that the, uh, the Hobgoblins have managed to persuade to come along with them. Uh, so they're either banging the drum or there's a big drum on the back with Hobgoblins banging a drum. Um, and essentially it works a little bit like an ogre giant, uh, it extends the units, um, march to the beat, and when you have to take march tests, uh, you can give, make it a standard bearer, and it acts as a war platform as well, so it can sit in units of hob levies or uh, other various infantry units for the hobgoblins. Uh, and then finally, uh, 20 blasted plains emissaries, which are hobglo hobgoblins with either flint lock axes, uh, you can give them blunderbusses or bows, uh, and they are wearing infernal armor as well. Uh, this lot are holding flintlock axes, though, so the range 18 handguns, essentially. Uh, and then finally, one of the uh, weirder, or I'd say hands down the weirdest unit in the book, uh, three Sky Mountain Emissaries. So these are cavalry models. Uh, the mount is a camel, and on the back of that 
is essentially an Ogre Bombardier. Uh, so the D6 shots at strength 4, AP2, quick to fire, range 24. They're very strange. Very, very strange. Um, they are based on... And I might be mis mispronouncing this, but I'll put up a picture uh, in editing, hopefully. Uh, they're based on Zamburax. Zamburax. Which is essentially a camel with a machine gun on, uh, which is exactly what that is as well. Which is very strange, very entertaining. Uh, I think they they look like great fun to use. Um, so let's have a look at the game. Uh, so we were playing Dawn Assault, and the secondary objective was Breakthrough, which was interesting for so many cavalry units. Um, my opponent chose to drop four first once we'd uh, gone through, gone forwards, back and back and forth with our chaff units. Uh, so from right to left, he's got some hog slingers, then his Tuscan Mahouts with his BSB in. Uh, then his cataphracts with the Shah General in, the 20 blasted planes emissaries with uh, flintlock axes, a unit of 40 hob levies with halberds, uh, the 40 spear hob levies with the drum gog yag in there, uh, 10 more uh, slingers in the front, uh, a unit of 20 bunker hob levies behind those with the, uh, the hobgoblin conjurer in. And then at the very far back, um, three of the Sky Mountain emissaries. Uh, and then on my side, I've got my, from left to right, some Realm Knights, uh, a unit of Yeoman Outriders, my Might Duke BSB in with the Grail Knights, my Banner of the Last Charge Realm Knights, my Valor Duke in with the Questing Knights, and on the far flank, uh, a unit of Yeoman. Uh, and as it was Dawn Assault and Breakthrough, I decided to keep one unit of Realm Knights in ambush so that I could bring it on in the bottom corner uh, and just threaten his bunker, make it a little bit more difficult for him to hide that unit away from me, uh, and also make it a little bit easier to make it all the way to the objective as well, without getting distracted or caught on uh, a different unit. Um, so for spells, uh, my Crown of the Wizard King rolled Evocation, so he's got Spectral Blades for this game. And my Druidism Master, as you can see on the left there, has taken Master of Earth, Entwining Roots, Summer's Growth, and Stone Skin. Uh, his Witchcraft Master took uh, Raven's Wing, Deceptive Glamour, The Wheel Turns, and Bewitching Glare. Uh, so with my Vanguard, he's got Vanguard on his two units of Hobslingers, only six inches though. Uh, so they move forward as much as they can. Uh, my unit on the right shuffles up behind the hill, uh, and then my unit on the left moves out far onto the left, uh, away from all of his shooting. I don't particularly want to lose my chaff very, very early on. I need to keep it safe for later in the game to um, either protect myself or guarantee a charge. Uh, so, trying to keep them alive as long as I can do, really, uh, rather than giving them away as I normally want to do. And we go to Hobgoblin's turn one. Uh, so, on the left, he moves up pretty cautiously for the most part. He doesn't want to get too close to me, obviously, uh, give me any long charges that I might want to make. Uh, the cavalry on the right-hand side, though, moves up far more aggressively, trying to catch up with the rest of his lines, and he forms a bit, little bit of an arch. Um, the Sky Mountain Emissaries just move out to the left. Uh, I was worried about him raven-winging him out over the um, impassable terrain off to the left there and getting some shots on my, my chaff, which I'm trying to keep safe. Uh, he's a little bit more aggressive with his bunker, though. Uh, I suppose with the bows being out of range, he wants to get a little bit up, so they're actually doing something. And I don't know how long... I'm not familiar with uh, witchcraft magic, but I don't think it's particularly long-ranged either, so he needs to move them up to get a little bit closer to me. Um, in magic, uh, he does try for a raven's wing on the Sky Mountain Emissaries, which I dispel with all my dice, and that leaves him to put a deceptive glamour on my Grail Knights. Um, despite my ma magic resistance too for the uh, two Aether icons there but um, I can't see myself being in combat next turn so that's not too much of a worry and then he puts the evil eye on the Sky Mountain Emissaries in the bottom left uh, so we go through to Equitane turn 1 um, I decide that this is a fight that I can probably take so I move up pretty aggressively on the left hand side I need to kill the uh, big units of infantry before I get tangled in with the Mahouts and the shield breaker shah again i try and keep my chaff safe um so I, I i position the yeoman in a way that they can see his chaff uh, and they're tucked away from most spaces that his shooting can get to 
without ex uh, I mean he, he could shoot me but then he'd be exposing themselves to uh, to my lances so that's fine if he does take that bait um, after shooting and magic um, I get off the oaken throne uh, I fail to cast master of earth on that front unit of hobslingers and he dispels stone skin on the questing knights I think and shooting with the bows kills a single hobslinger uh, so we go to hobgoblin's turn two um, so he shuffles about very, very cautiously, I think just reforms with the cataphracts and the mahouts on the far side. Uh, the blasted planes emissaries with the flintlock axes move up a little bit, so they're within 18 inches of my questing knights. Uh, and then his uh, sky mountain emissaries on the left hand side, and the hobgoblins with the bows uh, shuffle about to get decent shots on my grail knights ready for this turn of sh uh, shooting. Um, so magic, he again doesn't manage to get all that much off against me, uh, which was a shame for him. Uh, and then in shooting, um, the slingers shoot at the grail knights, trying to put the boiling oil token on there to give uh, a bonus to the bows next to them. Uh, but all ten shots miss, unfortunately. Um, the sky mountain emissaries with their hand cannons open up on the grail knights. Roll for 14 shots, only hit twice, and neither of them wound, which was brutal. Uh, of course, the archers without any AP, uh, and my resilience for the couple of them that hit and wounded, I just saved. So that, that was, um, they bounced off of me. Um, the cataphracts also try and shoot the questing knights on the far side, and do no wounds to me. Uh, the blasted planes of pensaries with their flintlock axes are a little bit more lucky though, and they do two wounds to the questing knights. Uh, so there we go, you can see what's happened with magic and shooting there. And we go to Equitane turn 2. So I charge my Yeoman Outriders into the flank of his Hobslingers. Uh, I'm thinking I'll break that unit just on combat res. He's not going to be able to do an awful lot of damage to me because if he's got so few attacks to the side. Um, and then I can either run them down or they'll chaff up his units or potentially they'll ping through everything and end up on the far side and that will be that chef dealt with for the game basically uh, and then it'll leave my my yeoman outriders out in the way blocking one or two of the units as well so kill a couple of uh, birds with one stone there i don't think i have a particularly eventful magic phase druidism is quite short ranged and very combat dependent so nothing happens there i've got very little shooting so post combat um yeah <laughs> So I kill three of the Hobslingers, they kill one of me, uh, I break them and then they run far enough to clip the Halberdiers, which then pings them through the Halberds, then the Blasted Plains Emissaries, then the Cataphracts, and then the Tuscan Mahouts. And even with a uh, re-rollable discipl uh, Discipline 9 for the Mahouts, they've panicked and run away, and so have the Halberds, uh, which has really stalled the advance on the right hand side. Um, he should be able to rally with them, he's still got his general within range of both of them, so I can't imagine he'll lose either a unit, but uh, it, it, it is a good thing for me to, to stall him like that. Uh, got very very lucky for me, very unlucky for my opponent of course, um, and that's the sort of thing that just, you know, if, if dice are against you then that, that can just happen with any army, even dwarves. Um, so Hobgoblin's turn three. Uh, he does rally both units, so they reform, and the Slingers, in fact, uh, all reform to face back towards the center. Um, after his moves, uh, he's just shuffled the Cataphracts forward a little bit. Uh, the Sky Mountain Emissaries as well have shuffled forward a tiny bit. The Flintlock Axes are still in range, so they've not bothered moving anywhere. Uh, and we go to... Magic. So uh, again, he has a very unlucky magic phase. I think he manages Deceptive Glamour on the Grail Knights again. Um, he does a whole seven wounds from the Blasted Plains Emissaries. So the uh, the Flintlock Axes on my Questing Knights do seven wounds to the Questing Knights. Um, he's AP2 at Strength 4. Out of the seven wounds, he does zero. Uh, I, I pass all of my saves. I pass six four-up saves and then one at plus Aegis, uh, which was... You know, lovely for me, really very, uh, almost disheartening for my opponent, I think. <laughs> uh, just watching all that um, pretty high-powered firepower just bouncing off of my knights. 
Uh, so we go to Equitain turn three, and a lot happens. So my Yeoman up in the top right charge the Hobslingers that have come round the building there. Uh, so the Ground Lights charge the bunker. The bunker decides to flee. Uh, I redirect into the Sky Mountain Emissaries. Uh, the Realm Knights, the four of them there, can see the uh, the bunker as they're fleeing, so they declare a long charge into them to push them off the board, which kills his magic phase. Uh, and then they redirect into the Sky Mountain Emissaries, who also decide to flee. Uh, I think on the stand and shoot he manages to do... Uh, he doesn't manage to do any wounds to my Grail Knights, which is unfortunate. Um, I Again, he's rolling very poorly for his... Um, to hit and to wound, and then I'm rolling well on this, any saves that uh, I have to then take. Um, so that's a fail charge from both the Grails and the Realms on that flank, but I've dealt with his Wizard and his Wizard Bunker, and pushed back his shooting, which is nice. Um, so after my movement, I've just backed off for now. Um, I, I've got the Tuscan Mahouts too far away to worry about. Uh, the Halberds I don't need to worry about just yet. I just need to back off from the um, the flintlock axe shooting. I don't want to tempt <laughs> tempt fate too much with them. The yeoman outriders uh, have blocked up his drum gog gag and the uh, spear levies from charging into my grails as they're rather close. I don't want him to break my steadfast and just run through me. Uh, I'm not all that particularly powerful if I'm off the charge, especially not my might my, my might duke. Um, and my ambushers turn on this uh, arrive this turn, so they're in a good position to flank the the spears there if needed, and also uh, deal with the sky mountain emissaries if they do manage to uh, rally. Uh, so post combat uh, up in the top right there with the yeoman outriders and the hobslingers, uh, despite him having fourteen attacks, uh, he just doesn't manage to do any wounds to me. Um, they've got paired weapons, so. Lots of attacks, hitting on fours, wounding on fours, and he just ma doesn't manage to get any through on me. Uh, I kill one of him and break him, but he does manage to uh, flee far enough away that uh, I don't catch him. Uh, so we go to Hobgoblin's turn four. And uh, so he moves up far, far, far more aggressively this turn. The, uh, uh, the cataphracts come up very, very close to my uh, questing knights and my Valor Duke. Uh, the Tusker Mahouts are in hot pursuit, uh, trying to get involved with the game now that um, it's looking a little bit more dicey for the Hobgoblins. Uh, the Flintlock Axes have a flank against my Realm Knights, so they'll get plus one to hit and plus one AP. So uh, hitting on fives instead of sixes, and they'll be AP three, which is potentially not very good for the Realm Knights, uh, for the Grail Knights even, sorry. So nothing happens in Magic, obviously. Um, the shooting, despite the plus one to hit and the AP3, I roll really well on my saves again. He rolls very poorly still and only manages to kill two of the Grails. Uh, in combat, unsurprisingly, uh, the, <laughs> the gigantic beast and the 40 spear levies successfully dispatch my four yeomen, um, as, as to be expected. Uh, and we go through to... Equitain turn four. So he, he's um, reformed um, to be as wide as he can, basically, without blocking too many of his own units uh, to face the front of his uh, Gog Yag and the Spears at as many of my Lancers as possible to try and weather the charge that's about to come in. So my turn four charges. I declare uh, the Grails into the front of the Gog Yag and the Spears. Uh, the banner of the last charge go into the flank to ignore, uh, to counteract his spear bonus. Uh, I bring in another unit of realm knights there to give them uh, basically something to do, just to add a little bit of extra combat res, just in case I need it. Uh, and my questing knights with the Valor Duke uh, are going to go and see what the Shah is made of. Um, I'm going to slowly chop through the champion, presumably, and then the, the Shah, and we'll see how well that goes. Uh, so, post moves. Uh, all of those charges make it in. Um, the yeoman up in the top right had just enough movement on a failed uh, march, so with an advance they were just about able to get in the way of the Tuscoma Houts. Uh, and the bottom unit of Realm Knights move around into the scoring objective, uh, into the scoring zone. In magic, I get spectral blades off on the 
questing night to combat. Uh, and besides that, I don't think I managed to get an awful lot off. I don't have anything that really needs regrowing. I think possibly I get entwining roots off on the um, hob levies, maybe? I'm not sure. No, nothing pretend, uh, tremendously impactful. Um, but after combat, um, I've killed 34 of the four, no, 36 of the 40 hob levies. Uh, so leaving the, uh, the gog yag auto broken. So that flees. And after three cavalry units, I do successfully catch him. So the banner of the last charge unit spins 90 degrees and then hits the front of the blasted planes emissaries with their flint lock axes. Uh, the grail knights unfortunately fail like a six inch overrun into the halberds and the realm knights were in such a position that they were going to miss everything anyway so they just get in the way of my other realms which is unfortunate we go to hobgoblins turn five uh, we go straight through to combat as i've forgotten uh, everything else to put in oh um before i forget uh you might notice that i'm missing my general um and that is because uh, Shield Breaker and Breath of the Brass Brawl with a Toxic Breath Attack is not good for a guy who's relying on a 1-up pre-rollable armor save. <laughs> so, yeah, that, uh, he had a Potion of Swiftness, um, he drinks that to go before me with my Light Lance with Kingslayer. Um, does a wound on me with the attacks, and then the Breath Attack manages to do the type final 2 and kills my general in one round before he gets to swing. Uh, which is very sad for me, but... Um, Nice to see that uh, Hobgoblin characters can hold their own to an extent. So going through to Hobgoblins, um, the Tuscan Mahouts charge the front of my Yeoman there. The Halberds charge the front of the Grails. Uh, I have to close the door to him because of where all my units are, uh, but he charges in there, at least to stop me from charging him. And the Hobslingers shuffle around a little bit. Um, after combat... Um, I've killed a fair few. So the, the Tuscan Mahouts easily wipe out the, um, the Yeoman Outriders. The Cataphracts and the Questing Knights continue to grind away at one, at one another. Um, particularly with the Shield Breaker uh, making all the difference there. Otherwise he'd be AP 0. Uh, although saying that, he's got 10 strength 4 AP 1 attacks from his mounts. Uh, so that's doing work as well. But I managed to hold on a Discipline 7 or something. The Banner of the Last Charge unit kills a rank and a bit of the Blaster Plains Emissaries and forces them to flee. Um, I don't manage to catch them. I'm in the flank of the Halberds. I can't complete that and they can't close the door to me, so I just stay where I am, which is very unfortunate. Because uh, it also means that because I'm not going to be able to complete the charge, I won't be able to charge that unit next turn either. Uh, and in the combat with the Grails and the Halberds, uh, he passes his steadfast check after I wipe out an entire rank of guys. Uh, so, Equitain turn 5. Uh, with my little Banner of the Last Charge unit unable to move anywhere, uh, or unable to charge rather, because uh, they can't get round the Halberds and they can't charge the flank of the Halberds, they have to reform and back up a little bit. Uh, the two scoring darts move through to the behind... Uh, behind the uh, hobgoblin lines to get in the secondary objective for scoring. Um, and then in magic, I get entwining roots off on the uh, halberds to grow back a uh, questing knight. And I shoot off one of the hobslinger units uh, just to finish them off and again to grow back one of the, uh, the questing knights. So I'm up to a unit of seven again there, which is nice. Uh, Post combat. Um, the uh, the Grails, now that they're hitting on twos and wounding on threes with plenty of attacks, they go straight through uh, the Halberds, uh, auto-break them now that they've broken their steadfast and they flee through my two units off the board. So I reform to face where the action is going to happen. Uh, in combat with the Cataphracts and my Questing Knights, my unit champion issues a duel which is accepted by the Shah again with his Shield Breaker. Uh, he uh, does a total of three wounds to me. So one for killing me, and normally two overkill, but one of the special rules for Hobgoblins is uh, both players get minus one to a minimum of zero uh, for combat res on challenges, which is interesting. So instead of getting the two overkill from doing the two extra wounds to me, he only gets the plus one, um, which is very important because it meant that that unit now stuck in combat. 
Um, so I lose a couple of guys, I kill one of him, uh, and then I stick ready for the Tuscan Houts to charge me in the flank, uh, which is excellent. Of course it is, that's great for me. <laughs> uh, so Hobgoblins turn 6, of course the Mahouts come into the flank of my questing knights. He can only get two files in, so he'll only have two D3 impact hits. So I'm hoping he wipes me out. Um, if he wipes me out, then he won't be able to make me flee. Uh, if he f if I flee, then he can chase after me with the cataphracts, and that might lead to a charge into one of the front of my lances. Um, if he does wipe me out, then the Mahout, uh, the Mahouts can still technically flank my my realm knight bus on an eleven. But uh, even with swift stride, uh, hopefully that'll be outside of the realm of possibility. Uh, the Blasted Plains of Miseries um, turn around on a rally check. Uh, so they rally this turn and turn around ready for uh, my turn 6. Um, in combat, he does manage to wipe me out, so thankfully he can't pursue with the Cataphracts, so they turn to face my units, uh, and the Mahouts only roll an 8. Uh, so they're nice and close to my unit, but not close enough to flank charge me, thankfully. So Equitain turn 6. Um, so I crisscross my Banner of the Last Charge unit and the Grail Knights. Uh, I charge the Banner of the Last Charge through into the Cataphracts first to make way for the Grail Knights, the Might Duke and my BSB to go into the Mahouts. Uh, and instead of giving him a stand and shoot with the Realm Knights, I decided to stand where I was and just score the objective with, the, uh, with those two units. And then after combat, uh, with the Might Duke in there, hitting and wounding on twos, and then... There's half a dozen Grail Knights and a Grail BSB. Uh, I do 12 wounds, I think, if not more, uh, to the Tuscan Mahouts. They auto-break and I just chase them down. Um, and then the Banner of the Last Charge unit there kills one, by the looks of things. Yeah, one, <laughs> one Cataphract. Um, and then the Shield Breaker Shah kills uh, a rank of guys. Uh, I passed my break test, thankfully, with my BSB there, uh, and that's the end of the game. So it was really, really interesting seeing um, an entirely new book. Obviously, you know, I've not seen anyone play the game before with uh, with Hobgoblins, um, so it was very strange playing against uh, something, like, entirely new that I had zero experience with. Uh, but I think it's a really interesting book. Um, I think... All of the supplements are fantastic. They're, they all come with um, little snippets of uh, background for each unit in entry, uh, which is fantastic. So, um, and obviously, it's it's not something that's based on on legacy. Uh, it's not based on anything from uh, you know Warhammer Fantasy or anything. Um, so, a lot of it is uh, you know it's, it's a really good space to be uh, creative uh, with the new content for Ninth Age. So, uh, if you haven't already, go and check it out. Um, it'll be on the Ninth Age forums. There'll be a link to uh, hopefully the the news article below. So let's take a look at the uh, the scores actually as well before I say goodbye. Um, so I, I did manage to hold on to a lot of my points. Um, obviously my characters are very expensive. My two combat lances are very expensive, and killing off the the Mahouts and the BSB at the end um, really made a big difference to the score. And I scored the secondary objective. So uh, I did sort of. Uh, you know, a, a few failed panic checks here and there, and being not quite as cautious as maybe could have been with the bunker uh, made a big difference. But um, it was a good game. I think um, I think Hobgoblin's potentially a, a little bit more competitive than the other supplements, possibly. But don't take my word for it. Um, you could go and check out yourself. Go and go and have a look on UB. Um, slap some models together and have a go. See what you find. See what you think of them. So thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.